Hi, it's John Bresden from Inuit Galway. So we're going to continue on with looking at the next block in our system of the mobile phone. And today we're going to talk about circuit boards and laws. So, so far we've looked at the charger subsystem. We've broken the charger down into its constituent uh, sub subsystems. And today we're going to look at the circuit board, which is another subsystem in the mobile phone. So what's the purpose of the circuit board sub subsystem? Well, its aim is to be able to distribute an appropriate voltage and current to the other subsystems in the phone and to allow connections between these subsystems. For example, we might want to connect the GPS subsystem to the CPU subsystem so that the computing unit can have access to uh, a phone's position in real time. Um, we talked before about a application which was Wikichuge which made use of multiple subsystems of the phone, the GPS, the CPU, the screen, um, and so on. Now in terms of um, the circuit subsystem, one important term to know about is what's called a PCB. A PCB stands for printed circuit board. And this essentially is a mass produced board that allows not just electrical connections, but allows the mechanical support of different electronic components. And as it says here, it's a board that will mechanically support and electrically connect electronic components using conductive pathways etched from copper sheets laminated onto a non-conductive substrate. And PCBs are used in almost all common electronic devices and consumer electronics goods. So what's a PCB look like? Well, there are two popular variations of PCBs. We have what are called through-hole PCBs, and we have what are called surface mount uh, PCBs. And the main difference between them is that on a printed circuit board that has through-hole, we have uh, holes from one side of the board which connect through to connections on the other side of the board. Surface mount basically is, is like a flat version of a PCB where you have um, flat uh, components typically um, uh, in, in on, on a board and uh, the connection is made directly on the board itself. Um, this particular um, board here is, is uh, showing actually the two types of technology, true hole and surface mount technology. We've got some surface mount uh, components like uh, X1 here, and we have some true hole components like uh, switch one over here. Um, and then you can see these different areas on the board which correspond to where different components go. So the left hand side here is showing the design of a particular printed circuit board designed using a computer package. Um, it's optimized for the best layout. And what you can see here then is different connections for things like resistors, for capacitors, um, for a particular chip, for some light emitting diodes and so on. And then on the right hand side, you can actually see the final manufactured uh, board where you know hundreds or thousands or maybe even millions of boards can be um, manufactured based on the computer design. And again, over here, you can see the different components. So for example, where C7 and C9 are shown here on the left-hand side, we have the capacitor um, C7 and uh, C9 shown over here on the right-hand side. So as I say, this is a particular board which combines both uh, true hole and uh, surface mount on, on the one board. So one of the most common uh, devices you find on a printed circuit board is the resistor. So what is a resistor and what is it used for? Well, the resistor itself reduces the flow of current around a particular circuit or in a particular branch of a circuit or that goes into a certain device. And if we think back to the water analogy of current flowing around some pipes, well, then you can think of a resistor as being a bit like a narrowing of the pipe where we allow less flow um, due to that particular um, constriction. Resistors themselves have the property of resistance Resistance is measured using um, a measured uh, quantity, which is the ohm. And uh, we have uh, two symbols here. Then we have the quantity symbol for resistance, which is R. And then we have the unit symbol for the unit that the quantity is measured in, uh, which is ohms or omega. Um, and as it says there, resist resistance can be thought of as the opposition to current. So it's basically um, some measure of um, and opposition to the flow of current in, in a particular part of a circuit. So as I said, like a constriction, um, another way to think about it is that you have 
essentially the same amount of water flowing in, in the water analogy, albeit at a slower rate. Remembering that current is the rate at which electrons pass a certain point in a circuit, well then the resistance will basically reduce the rate at which those electrons can pass the, 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 the same point. So the same amount of electrons have to pass through um, a particular branch of a circuit, but the resistance can slow the flow of those electrons or essentially reduce the rate um, at which the electrons pass a certain point, which is in turn an expression of current. A nice way to think about um, voltage, which we've um, talked about um, current and resistance, is this particular picture here. The, the source is unknown, but what you can see here, it, here is voltage, which is the force that pushes electrons around the circuit. Remember the old expression for voltage was electromotive force. And that uh, force is pushing uh, poor old current here, represented by amps through um, a particular uh, pipe. But up here then we have resistance, which is trying to reduce or um, constrict the, the, the flow of current uh, through that pipe. So what you can imagine is that the greater the resistance, the greater the number of ohms, then the uh, smaller the current or it's the smaller the, the rate of flow of electrons through here. Um, and also, if you increase the voltage, increase the force, then that in turn can you know, push more current um, through the circuit for a fixed, um, uh, fixed value of resistance or ohms. So we have our three uh, units here, volt, ohm and amp, corresponding to voltage, resistance and current. Now the value of a resistance, or sorry, a resistor is specified by various color bands shown on the, on the side of the resistor for these cylindrical um, resistors. We have other types of resistors which are surface mount resistors where the number of the resistor is, is essentially just printed on it. But for these types of resistors, which you see in, in a lot of circuits, you essentially have to read off the color bands and calculate the resistance from that. So in this case here, we have uh, three color bands and then we have another band. And uh, in this type of resistor, the three color bands essentially represent the value and the fourth color band represents a tolerance. In other words, how accurate is the resistance value? There's a table of resistors. I've given a link in the footer there, but you can essentially look up the first two uh, codes to represent numbers. The third code represents a multiplier, that is the number of uh, ten, tens that that's going to be multiplied by. And then the fourth code represents a tolerance. So the first will be a number, the second will be a number, the third will be a power of 10, and then the last one will be a plus or minus um, X percent. So a little bit more about resistance. So you saw the picture earlier on of the relationship between current voltage and resistance. Well, one ohm is essentially the resistance if one amp of current is in a material when one volt is applied. And this is called, uh, well, this relationship is uh, called after George Ohm, who first established the relationship between voltage and current in a resistor. And he found that increasing the voltage caused an increase in the current. Remember back to our picture where you've got the voltage pushing current through the circuit. Well, you can think of it in terms of that. Increasing the voltage causes an increase in current. And then of course the converse is decreasing the voltage will decrease the current as established by George Ohm. So we call this Ohm's law. And in equation form, we can say that in a resistor, the voltage and the current are directly proportional and the constant of proportionality is a resistance or in short, V is equal to Ri. Now we can also represent this in triangle form and this allows us to um, essentially think of V in terms of I and R, to think of R in terms of V and I, and to think of I in terms of V of R. Um, so you can look at this in different ways. You can say, for example, the V is equal to I times R. Okay, so again, think of a kind of a, a triangle around those. You can also think of it in terms of I being equal to V over R. Okay, so again, roughly the triangle. And then lastly, we have R being equal to V over I. Okay, so again, we have a, a, a rough triangle shape there. So V is equal to I times R, I is equal to V over R, or V over I is equal to R as well. 
Now the relationship between um, voltage and current, which as we said is uh, related by this constant of proportionality, which is the resistance, will vary of course depending on that value of resistance. So for example, if we have a large resistance shown here on the top left, you can see that basically the current is um, gradually increasing as the voltage increases. But because we have a large resistance, again, think back to Ohm's law, V is equal to R times I, then um, if R is big, then I is going to be smaller um, for a certain value of resistance. And then over here on the top right, we have a small resistance where the current is increasing quite quickly for increases in, in voltage, again, given by, by Ohm's law. However, the relationship for Ohm's law specifically applies to resistive circuits. We do have relationships between current and voltage for other types of um, circuit elements and circuit components. For example, the relationship for a diode is shown here on the bottom left, where we have a um, basically almost zero current flowing up to a certain point when uh, the current will start to ramp up for a particular um, voltage. And over here uh, for the battery, we have essentially an almost um, fixed voltage for whatever current is being drawn from the battery. So we have different relationships, but the ones we're mainly talking about here in terms of resistors are the, uh, the, the linear relationship between voltage and current. And of course, when uh, V is equal to zero, uh, from Ohm's law, I is equal to zero. So we have the linear relationship for, you know, as shown here for the, for the large resistance or for a uh, small resistance. Um, and a minor note here about the battery, which is in the footnote, it says an ideal battery would have a horizontal line. Basically, you would have essentially a fixed voltage being provided for any kind of current requirement. However, there is a slight slope here due to an internal resistance in, in, in a battery. So, if we want to calculate the resistance in a particular circuit, um, we could do it as follows. So I've drawn here on this particular um, uh, slide a very simple circuit consisting of a voltage represented here by Vs, as S representing uh, source. So this is the source voltage, basically the, the voltage that provides um, um, current at the circuit. And then we draw the current flowing out of the positive side of the battery. So we have a, a battery represented by multiple cells here. We have the long lines and short lines representing the positive and negative cells in a battery. And this one here is a, a multi-cell um, battery. So we have a plus at the long line and you could think of a, a minus being drawn here at the short line. Um, so the current flows out from the, the plus side of the battery in a closed loop. If there's no closed loop, if there's a break here in the loop, then nothing will flow. Think of a, um, uh, of a, of a light uh, or a torch, for example, where you have a voltage, you've got a bulb and with a switch in it. If you open the switch, then the current cannot flow and the light does not come on. So the current flows out of the positive side of the voltage source and then it flows through the components back around the circuit to the minus side of the uh, voltage source. Now in reality, what's actually happening here is that the um, the battery is actually pushing out electrons out from its minus side and these are being uh, are, are moving around the circuit and they are being uh, are, are being moved in this direction and all the way around and back um, going to the positive side you can think of them being I suppose it's almost like they're being attracted back to the positive side here of, of, the, of the battery but we draw the current flowing in the opposite direction this is called the conventional current flow um, uh, technique to, um, to, to, uh, to represent the flow of, of current around a, a circuit. Um, uh, the electron flow then will be in the, in the opposite direction. So then over here on the right hand side I've drawn a resistor and the resistor is, is represented by this um, zigzag symbol which essentially is showing I suppose the difficulty with which current is flowing through that zigzag if you can imagine it um, representing the opposition to the flow of current by introducing this extra kind of um, difficulty as it's going through there. And then we draw a voltage across that particular um, resistance. And in a component, we have a flow of current um, that is corresponding to whether um, something is producing energy or something is absorbing energy. In this case here, we have a resistor which will actually be absorbing energy. 
and we draw the flow of current. Um, well, the flow of current is, is, uh, is, is shown in this direction here. This is how the current is flowing around the circuit from, from the positive side back to the negative side, or as I said, in terms of the electrons flowing from the minus side back to the positive side. But in the uh, resistor here, if you look at I, it's flowing in this direction down through the resistor. So it's flowing from plus to minus in the resistor, okay? So we have the voltage, we have the current, and we have the resistance. And again, from Ohm's law, we can calculate any of these, um, these uh, quantities by using Ohm's law. So if we know the voltage and we know the resistance, we can calculate how much current is flowing and so on for the other variables. So as I say, the current flows out of the positive side of the battery around the circuit through the different components and back to the minus side. Again, you can think of it as being a flow of electrons in the opposite direction. And through the resistor, the current is flowing from um, top to bottom here. And we typically label that as being plus on one side and minus on the other side. So the current is flowing from um, plus to minus in the resistor. Um, and again, we can calculate the uh, voltage, the current or the resistance from Ohm's law. So as an example, we have a, uh, a circuit with the same layout as before, but with these values. The voltage source has 20 volts, the resistance has five ohms, and we're asked to find the current. So what is the current flowing through this, um, through this um, resistor? Now the first thing to note is that at any point in the circuit where the circuit is essentially just joined by wires, then we can find the voltage um, at that point will be the same as any, as any voltage along that wire. So over here we have a 20 volt source voltage, okay? I mean, we're told here it's 20 volts. That means the voltage here, with respect to here, is 20 volts. There's 20 volts between here and here. And at any point along these wires, since they're just connected together, it'll have the same voltage. So it means this point here, with respect to this point here, will also be 20 volts. So VR is also equal to 20 volts, okay? So they're directly connected together. You're supplying 20 volts from this battery to this point here um, and this point here across the resistor. Um, and then we have um, our resistance, we're told it's five ohms. So therefore we can calculate the current simply from Ohm's law. So we know V is equal to R times I. We have 20 is equal to five times I. And therefore I is going to be equal to four. four amps. So you can write down four amps as being the answer for, for I. So again, uh, voltage given in volts, resistance given in ohms, and current given in amps. Small question down here at the bottom, what happens if the voltage is being halved? Well, you can imagine if the voltage is halved, then this value here will be halved as well. So we can, um, we can essentially uh, just divide all of our, our numbers by two. So we can take, for example, 20, if it's halved, then the resulting current will also be halved. So instead of four amps, we'll have two amps. And again, think back to the picture where we had the person shoving current through the constriction. If the voltage is reduced, then the current will be reduced as well. So let's have a look now at branches, nodes, and loops in a circuit. So what's a branch? Well, a branch is where a circuit element exists in a circuit. It's essentially some type of component or power supply or other device that exists in a circuit and is connected to other elements in the circuit. For example, in this particular picture here, you can see there is a voltage source connected from the top here to the bottom. There's another um, element here, which is a resistor, which is connected here from the top to the bottom. And then we've got two more resistors here on the right hand side connected uh, to each other. So there's a branch um, existing where one element is connected to another element. So for example, there's a branch here for VS. It's connected between this point here and this point here. There's a branch here with R1. There's another branch here with R2, where R2 is connected to R1 and to R3. And we have another branch here then, which is uh, for R3, where R3 is connected to R2 and then down to R1. And those branches connect at nodes. Now, a node can be thought of where as being where two or more circuit elements connect together. Up here at the top, you can see 
the top of Vs and the top of R1 and the top of R2 are connected together. And down here at the bottom, you can see the bottom of uh, Vs, the bottom of R1 and the bottom of R3 are connected together. And then here in the middle, you can see that R2 is connected to R3. So in this circuit, we actually have uh, three nodes in the circuit. So I'll just count these out. So we've got three nodes. Um, in terms of branches, we have one, two, three, four branches, basically where a circuit element exists, four branches. And then we have loops. And loops are where um, you can make a path around a circuit and you can start and end at the same point. So I'll just choose blue here for this. So if I take any point in the circuit, for example, this point up here, and I move around the circuit in the loop, um, I can actually work my way all around that particular loop back to the point I started from. So that's one loop. And as it says in the text, there may, there may be loops within loops as in this circuit. So again, you can imagine a loop um, starting again. You can start a point in the circuit, it doesn't really matter where. I'll start at this point here, for example, work my way down here and back up here and back around. You've got another loop, that's loop number two. And then we have a third loop, which I will draw in another color. Um, again, you can start at any point, you can start at the same point again, it doesn't matter. You can work your way around this particular loop here, another loop, but on the inner path there. So we've got three loops um, in this particular circuit. Okay, so three loops, as it happens, we've got four branches corresponding to the four circuit elements, and we have three nodes corresponding to the places where different circuit elements are connected together. Now you can imagine um, drawing a circuit for any type of, um, of uh, electronic system, for example, for a, a torch, um, you know how to connect it up. You Typically you put in uh, two batteries into the circuit. So you've got one battery um, connected end to end with, with another battery. And then that battery is um, connected to some kind of series of copper connections inside in, in the torch. So typically there's something as shown here where there's a, a switch. I'll just put a little uh, a line here representing the switch and then that's connected into a light bulb and that's connected back around to the other side of the circuit. So in this particular um, system we've got our light bulb which is one element, we have a switch we have a, which you can think of as being another element, we have our two batteries again they are separate elements so we've got actually four elements in the circuit or four branches and we've got different nodes. We've got a node here where um, this bulb is connected to the light switch, another node here where this light switch is connected to the battery, another node here where the two batteries connect together, and then we have another node here where one battery is connected to the other side of the light switch. So in, in total we've got one, two, three, four nodes in this particular circuit. Now the other thing to note here is that these batteries are typically connected end to end, and this is referred to as being in series. We're going to talk about, about that now um, in a little bit more detail because you can connect batteries in series, but you can also connect other types of circuit elements in series. And depending on what type of elements they have, you'll have different effects for resistors and as we see later on for capacitors and so on when they are in series. If we wanted to place elements in series, then we essentially connect them end to end. Um, both voltages and resistors that are in line with each other are said to be in series. So again, think of the torch example on the previous slide. Typically you put in two, I don't know, D batteries or AA batteries into a torch. You put them in end to end and you actually do it such that the positive side of one battery is connected to the negative side of another battery. It's the same with um, resistors. We typically connect them end to end if we want to uh, create a set of resistors in series. You can see in this picture on the right hand side here that if we have some current flowing through a circuit then it flows through the resistance R1 and then flows through the resistance R2. Um, there's no other path for that current to flow so it can only flow um, from here down to here. So the same current will flow through things in series whether they, in series, whether they are uh, resistors or batteries. And then to find the total value of voltage or resistance we simply add their values to find the total voltage or resistance. So when we put two one and a half volt AA batteries in series, we add them together, we get three volts. If we had two 20 ohm resistors in series as shown here, 
when we would add them end to end, we would get 40 ohms. There's a variety of useful laws which were derived by uh, Gustav Kirchhoff, who was shown here in the picture with his friend and colleague Robert Bunsen of Bunsen Burner fame. And he developed a series of useful laws for looking at currents and voltages around a circuit. And we're going to be looking at some of those um, in, in these videos. So the first is called Kirchhoff's Voltage Law. And KVL, for short, you may see me or hear me talking about KVL, basically says that the sum of voltages around a loop is equal to zero. So the sum of all of the voltages around the loop is equal to zero. Um, or another way uh, you can think of it in terms of the way it's written here is that the sum of the voltage increases um, is equal to the sum of the voltage decreases. The sum of the voltage increases and decreases around the loop is uh, zero. So for example, if you've got some positive voltages and some negative voltages um, around the loop, when you add, add them all up, the sum should be equal to, to zero. Um, so in this picture, sorry, in this particular picture here, we have a voltage source Vs, we have a voltage across this resistor Vr1, and we have a voltage across this resistor here Vr2. And to write out Kirchhoff's voltage law, you start at any point in the circuit, you work your way around it, and then as you come to a particular voltage, you write down the sign of the voltage you encounter first. So for example, in this case here, I've got plus uh, Vr1. And then we go down here and the next sign we encounter is Vr2, which is plus Vr2. And then as I move my way around the circuit again some more, the next sign I encounter, remember that the short line in the battery represents, or a short line in, in a a voltage source, DC voltage source, represents the, the minus side, we get minus Vs is equal to zero. So we've got some voltage increases and some voltage decreases, and when you sum them up, that um, should be equal to zero. Um, so Vs then would be equal to Vr1 plus Vr2. Now, up here on the top, you can see here, it says Vs minus Vr1 is e minus Vr2 is equal to zero. It's the same equation, it's just that I've worked around the loop in a different direction. It doesn't really matter which direction you do it in, you'll just encounter pluses and minuses and minuses in the, in the opposite direction, but you'll end up with the same uh, formula overall. So the sum of the voltages around the loop is equal to zero. That's Kirchhoff's voltage law, or KVL. So an ex as an example of, um, of using Kirchhoff's voltage law, uh, we have uh, the same um, circuit here as shown in the previous slide. Um, but we're going to add some values to this. So what happens if VR1 is 5.5, if VR2 is 4.5, then what is Vs? Well, we know from the previous slide that Vs minus VR1 minus VR2 is equal to zero. Therefore, Vs minus 5.5 minus 4.5 will be equal to zero. And therefore, we can calculate that Vs then is equal to 10 volts. And then the next part of the question says, if I is 0.5 amps, what are the values of R1 and R2? Well, again, it's just a matter of using Ohm's law. We know if I is flowing around this circuit here, if there's 0.5 amps um, flowing around the circuit, so VR1 will be equal to R1, which is uh, what we're trying to find out, multiplied by um, I, which is 0.5. So VR1 is 5.5 divided by I, which is 0.5, is equal to R1. And of course, that works out to be 11 ohms. And similarly, to find uh, R2, you would calculate it from being 4.5 divided by, divided by 0.5, which works out to be um, 9 ohms. So again, another check or a useful check would be to find the total resistance. We said earlier on that the resistances in series sum up together. So if you want to find the total resistance, just call it RT. We have R1 plus R2, R1 plus R2, which works out to be 20. And we also know that the voltage, the source voltage is 10 volts. 
So the total voltage between here and here is 10 volts, and the total resistance between here and here is 20 ohms, and the current flowing from here to here is 0.5 amps. And of course they all add up. If you've got 10 volts between the top and the bottom, and you have 20 ohms between top and bottom, then the current must be 0.5. So that's ohms law just at the bottom there. We have V is equal to R times I. Um, 10 volts is equal to 20 ohms times 0.5 amps. Now the second law from Kirchhoff is called Kirchhoff's current law, or KCL. And KCL says that at a particular node, the sum of the currents into the node is equal to the sum out of, out, out of the node. Or in another way, you could just think of it, all of the currents, the sum of those at a node is equal to zero. So either what goes in is equal to what comes out, or the total sum at that node is equal to zero, whichever way you want to think about it. Um, for example, in this particular circuit here, we've got IT flowing in, representing the total current, and then that's splitting into two branches here, shown here as I1 and I2. So we've got one branch here with current flowing through it. We've got another branch here where basically we've got these elements uh, R2 and R3 connected to, um, to R1. Um, what you can also see here is that I2 flows through the first element, which is R2, and then there's no other path for it to go through, so then that also flows down through R3. So IT is equal to I1 plus I2. What flows in must be equal to what flows out. Similarly, down here at this node here, we have I2 flowing in and I1 flowing in, and then we've got something flowing out here, which is also IT, because if IT is flowing up here, then IT must be flowing down here. IT flows up here through the battery and then back over here, splits into I1 and I2, and then recombines I2 plus I1 is equal to IT. So again, what flows in, in this case here, which is I1 plus I2, must be equal to what flows out, which is IT. So it's the same equation at, as at the top nose there. So that's Kirchhoff's current law. As I say, the sum of the currents into a node is equal to the sum out of the node, or all of the uh, currents at a node, um, IN, uh, is equal to zero. Now another uh, way to think about uh, creating voltages from resistances is to use resistors in a form called a voltage divider. Um, we've actually seen some voltage dividers in the previous examples. You might remember the example earlier on where we had 4.5 volts and 5.5 volts across two resistors coming from a 10 volt supply. Let's take an example here. Let's imagine that we have a charger provides five volts into our mobile phone. So the output from our charger subsystem, which we looked at last time, is five volts. But perhaps one of our subsystems needs one volt or two and a half volts to operate. So we need to divide the voltage further, and we can do this using resistors using what's called the voltage divider rule. And the voltage divider rule basically says that if you have two resistors, then the output across one of the resistors will be equal to that resistance divided by the total resistance times the input. So in this particular example here, we have V out is equal to R2 over R2 plus R1, or R1 plus R2, times V in. Now, I'll write this in another way. I'll just say the V2 is equal to R2 over R total times V total. So you've got some total resistance, sorry, some total voltage coming in. You've got a total resistance and you've got a portion of the resistance and then the voltage across that resistance will be proportional to that portion. It's the same way for the top here. If you look at uh, V1, which is basically, I'll just label these here as being V1 and V2. V1 as being the um, voltage across the top resistance, that will be equal to R1 over R total times V total. Okay? So let's go back to the numbers we had earlier on. So I was talking about the example with the 5.5 and the 4.5. Um, that was this one here. VR1 is 5.5 and VR2 is 4.5. So let's use those examples here. So VR1 is, which one was it? 
uh, VR1 is 5.5 and VR2 is 4.5. So let's just say that this is 5.5 here and this one here is 4.5. Well, that's showing um, an input voltage here being split across two resistors in a proportion that's related to the ratio of the resistors. You might remember this one here was 11 and this one here was nine when we calculated because the current was 0.5 amps. And again, you could validate, um, you could calculate, I suppose, 5.5 from the resistance values and the uh, voltage values if you didn't know them, because this would be equal to R2, which is nine, over R total, which is R1 plus R2, which is uh, 20, times uh, V total, which is 10. Okay, so we've nine divided by 20 multiplied by 10 works out to be um, 4.5 for V2. And then for V1, we have 11 over 20 times 10 works out to be 5.5 for V1. Okay, so you can calculate the voltage across the, um, the resistors R1 and R2 using this formula. In fact, in general, there is a... Um, a voltage divider rule formula where basically we can say that for a number of resistors in series, it might not just be two, there could be three or more, Vx is equal to Rx over R total times V total. Okay, so for any resistor X in a series of, a sequence of series resistors, we can calculate the voltage across that resistance by using this formula, which is the general form of the voltage divider rule. So we had KVL and KCL earlier on for Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. The voltage divider rule, you can think of the acronym there, VDR, representing this formula here. So that's it for today. I hope you uh, found that useful and I will see you in the next video.